Fire the engineer, man. <laughs> we <laughs> recorded <laughs> now. <laughs> Is this thing on? And now, to the millions and millions of listeners and viewers all across the world, it's the That's Not Christian Podcast. So, so now, how did you two brothers meet each other? Man, you start off finish. Yeah, we, we met... Um, I was doing ministry, just kind of like doing my own thing, you know, uh, not really doing the music, you know, because I, I had a following before I got saved when I was uh, in secular music. I had a pretty big following in L.A. on the underground scene. I featured, I did 106 in Park Freestyle Friday. I was on there. I battled this dude called Um P. I'm sure you know him. He's mm -hmm. from the, I think he's from, from the Bronx. Yeah, um P, yeah, yeah, man. We, we went at it, man. We ended up being <laughs> cool afterwards, though. But, uh. So I was doing my thing. I had a name, man. God called me. Long story short, I saw a video with him, uh, him and uh, uh, Bizzle. It's called King. And I saw it and That's I was my like, joint. yeah, man. And I'm That's like, man. Joint. And I told my wife, I'm like, it's something different about him. Like, that's the dude. Like, mm. I'm going to do ministry with him. It wasn't on no clout chasing or nothing like that. It was just like, that's, that's, I just felt the spirit of God in him. It was beyond music. So I didn't even seek him after that. Like, I, I wasn't like, I got to find this dude. I was like, Lord, if it's your will, it be done. I'm going to continue doing outreach, doing ministry, doing what I do. I was, so I started passing out mixtapes with no contact information. Because I'm like, God, if it's going to be done, it's going to be you. If somebody find me from this music, it is what wow. it is. I put just a messenger with no contact, you know. So, and I run into a dude I used to run the streets with uh, named Jesse at a concert. And Jesse was like, man, I got to introduce you to my bro. Like, man, you got to you got to meet him and y'all going to do ministry together. So he introduced me and ended up being hurt. Wow. And we met at a concert and then oh her God. see me. He like just a messenger. He's like, man, I've been bumping your CD for like a year. Like, wow. so it was like <laughs> how God hooked it up. And I was like, here it go. Because I didn't know how it was going to happen. But I knew it was going to be real if God did it. You know what I mean? So man. then we, man, and we've been like, like, man, 10 toes down like brothers. And we've man. been talking we ever since. Yeah, it's a family thing, man. We got it's beyond music. Yeah. You can't go beyond ministry, but it's beyond ministry because if we wasn't doing ministry, uh, the, the stereotypical version of it, we'd still be doing life together. Right. You know? mm. And it was weird because, like he said, he gave me the CD. He gave me the CD at the same place that we met again years later. Mm. Oh, so he handed it to you, to you himself. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. Say that. Here you go, man. I was walking out. I was leaving. It was at one of the... the the God over money tours. Okay. And I was just opening up for Biz on them. And uh, I just left. Walking out to my car, he was like, here, he was standing by the door. And then I took it and I bumped it. I was like, oh, that's hard. Like, you know what I mean? Because coming from the streets, it's hard to find Christian music that got that street edge. Right. But it's not full of flesh at the same time. Right. Like, you know what I'm mean? saying? It's, it's like a weird balance. Or they just not faking and stealing testimony. So, like, I was like, dang, like, it's righteous. It's, it's, it's gutter and it's dope. Like, I like it. So I had it for like a year just bumping it in, in rotation of the 15, 20 songs that I actually liked in CHH. And uh, and then our mutual friend Jesse was like, man, you got to meet my bro, Kareem. Wah. I was like, all right, man, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And it turned out to be him. And I didn't notice for a while that it was him. And then when I did, I was like, homie, you gave me a CD. Like, and I didn't even remember. <laughs> Because I was at the door just giving out CDs. Right. And me giving out the CD was before I had saw him on King. So yeah. I was just randomly like, okay, it's the exit. Always brought a few in my backpack. Let me just right. give them out a few when people leaving. So it wasn't wow. even strict. It was just let me get rid of these 20 CDs. That's why there was no conversation when I gave it to him. I was just passing them out. CD say just a message, you know. So, but again, God brought it back around. This is jam. Oh, it said jam. Yeah, it said jam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, so you know, we picked up from there, man, and then uh, just kept the ball running. And now, uh, we, we yeah. all cut now, for something great. yeah, now, so uh, you guys are dropping, uh, dropped the video this more today, right? Yeah, we dropped a video featuring Reconcile called the Street Yeah, Roll that joint hard, hard, that joint hard. This is this is this is just your second video together this year, right? 
Oh, yeah, we did one together off, off, off his album. That came out this year? Yeah, we dropped that video in January. Oh, January. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. okay, but that that's how that's how off of your other project, right? Not that not, not, okay. that was off my solo project. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the backstory with Streets Won't Let Me Live is funny. That was an accident song. It was a fluke, man. Um, hmm. We were putting on events, and we had Reconcile come out out to San Bernardino, and he was like, "Look, man, let's go to the studio after after the event is over." We went to the studio. It was his beat. He had the hook. Well, he didn't have the hook. We just start vibing and vibing and vibing. He came up with the hook. And then um, he had no plans on using the song. So I'm like, homie, oh, this wow. is to just throw it away. Right. And have, like, oh, one night we was in the studio and this dope song never came out. Right. So I, I think I'm like, look, man, let us put this on a project. Uh, gave him the finished project. He was amped. The finished product of the song. He was pumped about it. And, and now it's the, the first single for Urban Epistle. Yeah, I got a question. Uh, in the video, um, and in a lot of your bars, it seemed like there was a you guys have been have gone through a lot um, over the years. Um, can you talk a little bit about what's going? Because I know her, you have you have a, a line that talks about how a lot of the uh, you you don't talk about certain things you know that has gone on. Um, let me see if I can look up oh, the exact yeah. lyric. You don't have to talk about that, whatever it is, but like you know, give. Give us a little context nah, of, just, you know, your story. You know, it, it, it's just a wisdom thing, man. Um, yeah. Are we yeah. froze or are you froze? No, nah, no, nah, we good. Oh, that's him. It, it's just a thing, a wisdom thing, man. You know, when 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 you come from doing anything wrong, um, the powers that be don't always know about all the stuff wrong that you did. And right. so it's just wisdom, you know what I mean? And just respect for some of the people who you have wrong right. or people who were involved doing other people's wrong with you, you just use wisdom and certain stuff you just don't say. There's no reason for me to ever open my mouth about a whole lot of stuff. I ain't even told my wife some stuff. You know what I mean? Like I ain't told him some stuff. It's just right. It's just it's gonna be in here and we'll go to the grave with it. Yeah. Cause it's it's really it doesn't do anything. It's not edifying. It don't build nothing up. I'm not trying to get no credit for being who I used to be. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So there's no reason to talk about it. I'm pissed that I even either know about it or was involved. In it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yo, that's dope. I I I was uh watching the interview that you you had with uh what's his uh what's that brother's Brian name? Trinell? Spanish brother Brian. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you had said something. You had said something similar that really. I mean, I was like, yo, that's 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 so wise. I think it was something like to the effect that. Uh, wisdom, you know, is a difference between being saved and unsaved, like doing something that's godly and not godly. But maturity comes with doing something out of. Oh, out yeah, of yeah, I know what you're saying. You got to yeah. say it like that. I don't, I don't know if you could you could say it back, but I was like, yo, that's that's real. Like, you know, when you first get saved and you a babe in Christ, like your whole thought process is, is this a sin or not? Right. Right. And then when you right. get mature, it goes to, is this wise or not? Because maturity off the top, I'm not going to intentionally do nothing sinful. I'm, not, I'm just going to hold back on that. But then, like, is it wise? Because I could do something that's not necessarily a sin, but I could cause a problem by doing it. You know what I'm saying? And so, right. like, like, I can tell, going back to that line, I could tell some stuff that I was involved in or that I know about, and it's my testimony. And it's right. not a sin because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I got a scripture to stand on me giving my testimony. Mm. But it's not wise for me to say some stuff. Right. <laughs> it might send me to jail. It might send somebody else to jail. It might mm. hurt somebody else's feelings. It might even make somebody look at me like I'm not the man of God that I am today. Because they found mm. out about how dirty the dirt was that I came from. So you know what I mean? Like, it's it's, you get to a place where wisdom is the principal thing, right? Yeah, man. That was that was like I was like, wow, that's a that's a lot, you know. And that's something that every every believer as they grow should should consider, you know what I mean? That's something that Paul yeah. spoke about. Like, y'all still drinking this Similac, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta start getting onto this meat now, you know what I'm saying? And and you know, um, that was that was a good word, you know what I mean? I appreciate that, man. That really blessed me right there. So.
you guys are dropping on Black Friday. Was there any special yeah, yeah, reason y'all yeah. wanted to pick that day? Oh, uh, it's a few things. Um, being that it's a consumer society, um, you know, we wanted to to get away from the consumer thing, and I think it's a lot of rebellion with our country going on. So a lot of people might step away from actually partaking in the whole Black Friday get out. Um, it's a lot of conspiracy theories about where Black Friday started. I really don't know. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to like try to create no theology on a, a perhaps. Um, but also just, you know, the fact that they call it Black and we bring in light to the situation. Right. And mm-hmm. this, this album is really about illuminating in a dark world. And, you know, that whole Black Friday is, is, is really gluttony. Like, let's be real. Mm-hmm. Black Absolutely. Friday is, right. is a gluttonous day that uh, this country started just to, to to put a boost in the market. That's really what it's about. You boost the economy, you create a day, put all kind of stuff on sale. But it's gluttony because most of the time people aren't buying what they need. We're just buying what we want. You'll buy a TV mm-hmm. when you don't even have just a space. Just on sale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? And you're violent and so, about it too, that, right? That, if it's the last TV, yeah. the last PlayStation, like we, we're we fighting yeah. in Walmart over it. You know? Right after the day that we were thankful for everything that we got. Man, that's the crazy part. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. 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 So we uh we, we just wanted to, to highlight that man and, and counteract counteract the opposite of everything that's going on, man. Counteract the, the gluttony, counteract the, the greed, counteract the, the fighting and people just I want this. This is uh, I've always wanted a curic. I need to get one for my mom and you pushing somebody because they put their hand on it at the same time as you. Like we just want to bring some love and some light. To the situation, you know, Black Friday is a perfect day to do that. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So, what what features are we going to expect? I mean, we heard reconcile, right? Can y'all give us like some some people that are going to be there, or that's just, that's like we can't talk about that right now. <laughs> you, you can go, yeah, let them know. We got we got Young C, we got Young C on there. Okay, we're doing the interview. Yeah, we got uh, who else? Um, GS GS. GS on there. We got um, Jared, uh, Sanders. Jared Sanders, Bazooka the Disciple. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, Hog Mob's on. Um, who else on there, man? We got, I think that's it, huh? Ray Knowledge. Ray Knowledge, man. Dope, brother, too, man. He, he's dope. I think that's it. So we kind of, we really kept it. Initially, it was just a project with hurting myself. You know, like, man, we just going to do it, you know, because it's just a certain vibe that we caught that we was on. Yeah. So we like, man, we just gonna ride it out. But then as we start recording and we're in the studio, we like, man, like Jared is sound dope on this. You know what I mean? Like, right. and we got this cypher and we like, okay, Young C doing this thing, he's spitting, Bazooka spitting. Let's include them on the cypher, which is gonna be uh, the next video. We just shot it. So it's getting edited right now. So we like, so nice. strategically on, on, on particular songs, we just heard artists on it. You know, we wasn't reaching for something high or reaching for something low or, we was just we just heard certain artists on 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 songs when we was vibing in the lab and we reached out to them man and they jumped right on it so man that, that's what made it all dope it all came together and in all actuality all the other features that we named were just on hooks yeah uh gs is on the hook jared sanders is on the hook ray knowledge is on the hook the only two verses that didn't come from us on the whole project is from the Zuka and young c and that's on the cypher like everything else is pretty much just an in-house project and the people we reached out to they they could do the vibe of where we was going better than we could do ourselves got it and we just reached out to them and it, it, it's a dope project man yeah. I, the people who we let hear it so far it's been great reviews i'm actually excited yeah yeah definitely so yeah so this is your first joint together yeah so but y'all been cool for for some time now yeah, like th- throughout the the whole process of because people see like his album, which is Heaven on Earth, was was done. You know, hurts mm-hmm. Heaven on Earth album. So a lot of people was like, man, you wasn't featured on a lot of songs on there. That album, he had that in the oven for, for mm-hmm. a long time. He was just waiting on the right time. I mean, he revisited a few tracks as far as the production, but that album been done. So we just been rocking, doing shows on tour, mm-hmm. and. And the process of that, this mm-hmm. Urban Official album, the, the idea of it came about and then we brought it to life. So we just been rocking during 
before he released Heaven on Earth during the process. We went on a Heaven on Earth tour. And so, yeah, we, we've been rocking, man. But like I say, that album was already done. That's why we got this now. This started off as a three song EP. <laughs> <laughs> man, then he was like, because he was like, look, we'll just do an EP with you, introduce you. And then we kept recording. And it's like, all right, we'll do five songs and give them a bonus, make it six. And then right. that's thing you know, man, we got 12 songs, man. It just went on. Then we wow. like, let's just give them a, a whole project, you know, stop it. Bro. Yeah, we stopped at 12 because we'd be on 27 right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. wow. Double CD. Yeah, <laughs> it was just flowing. It was just yeah. flowing in. Flowing, yeah. bro. Yeah. It's dope, too. It's, it's, it's so, like, somehow we found a way to incorporate the people who understood and grew up in the golden era of rap late 80s, early 90s, to the early 2000s, to incorporate the people who love bars, who love structure, you know what I mean? Who like to hear people saying something, hear the passion in your voice, um, content. But then we found a way to incorporate incorporate the vibe and the sound that's going on right now. So, like, it's, it's an album that, like, your 12-year-old kid could hear, but mm -hmm. then your 45 year old friend or uncle or the 45 year old you <laughs> might like it. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey man. No, for real though. And it, yeah. like, when I remember we we just had a uh, our last studio session about a month ago and we wrapped it up. It was like four in the morning. We were sitting in front of his house listening to it. And it was like, dang. Yeah. Like we were stuck. Like, cause we, we've been piecing it together here and there. We're listening to two or three songs, but the first time we listen to it from beginning to end, it's like 4.56 in the morning. We sitting in front of the house. Don't even turn it down. Let's just, you know what I mean? But we wow. listened from beginning to end and we both was just like, it, we was blown away. And we, we're two people that are particular with music, even with ourselves. We'll go back and forth, like on a song, like we got to change this. This ain't good. This ain't right. So we're with the particulars and we're at the same time, like, I'm going to give you constructive criticism as a brother and I expect it back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we, mm -hmm. with That's that being said, we're not finna just do anything, you know? So when we sat there and we just looked at each other and he was like, man, we got one, you know what I mean? And, and you could just feel it, man. So I'm excited to do it. You know, I'm excited to, to be, to be a part of it, you know, cause it's something real. It's, uh, it's, it's biblically correct. It's currently correct. You know what I mean? It's it's everything. Mm -hmm. Like he say, the twelve year olds to the to the forty year olds, man. It's we we somehow mixed up the gumbo in there where everybody gonna like it in every generation, man. So that's the crazy part. Like my kids love it. When I'm riding with my kids, they love it. You know what I mean? My like right. people, brothers that ain't saved. Like we we did a, a podcast a couple weeks ago with one of the brothers I grew up with, and you know. Um, he struggled with his belief, you know, he 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 do his thing. We don't judge him. We love him right where he at. But he heard it and he like he told us on the show, like, this is what the, the streets need. He was like, look, man, he was like, I ain't gonna sugarcoat nothing. He was like, that did something to me. And we let him hear like three songs. He was like, mm. man, that did something to me, bro. He was like, I'm over here thinking, man, y'all mess me up. Like I y'all, y'all <laughs> check me all up. And I'm like, man, glory to God, you know, because that's what we want. I don't want the, the dude in the street to feel like we coming at him like, look, man, you got to change or else. No, it's right. like, look, I love you, bro, but look, I love you anyway, but this will work for me. I can introduce it to you. Now, if you choose to, to accept it, come on over here, man. Let us, let, let's rock. Let's rock mm -hmm. together. But I'm not finna come over there like, hey, man, what you doing, bro? Still out here on the block. What's wrong with you? Bro? Nah, this ain't that. This that where you feel convicted, but in love. in love and you're like wait did he just like say game banger was stupid but not in a stupid you know what i mean like it's, it's <laughs> right. so it's, like, it's just man i'm like telling you piss on somebody's whole lifestyle but they love you for but it. they love you right. for it <laughs> <laughs> dudes like us like i grew up in an area in la called hoover i've been from hoover my whole life you know as a teenager i got put on hoover my brothers we real factors in my area you know so even as a believer i got a lot of pool i got a lot of um influence in my area like i'm still tapped into the 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 advocate for peace and unity in my community i still pull up like recently one of my homies was murdered by the sheriffs the la county sheriffs man and i've been on the front line wow. speaking for that you know like i get calls every time like so 
I'm, I'm very involved in what go on in my community. Even though I changed my life, my homies still respect me because of who I was then. And now they see who I, they see who I am now. So for one, it shows them that God is real because right. he's changed up, you know, and hurt. he be with me. We pull up. When we shot this video, it was in the middle of a war zone. When we shot wow. the video that we dropped today to the point where I called her, he was on his way because he had a, a function in Oxnard. So he jumped on the freeway. I'm like, look, bro, I don't know if today going to be a good day. Even when I'm talking to him, just gunshots, just back and forth. It's a war zone. Wow. I'm like, arrived on his way. I'm like, ah. and he like, well, you know, pray on it. Whatever God tell you, either way, I'm on my way, you know, so I prayed about it. I went outside. I'm looking around, drove around a little bit. I'm like, all right, you know what? We're going to do it, you know, use wisdom, of course. But we we, we shot this video. I tell people the B-roll, the sheriffs, the, the, the crime scene, the helicopter, all of that stuff wasn't no B-roll that you would snatch off the Internet. Like we was in the thick of right. the storm. Like we doing wow. a scene in the truck. The police pull on the side of us, flashing it, looking, vroom, pull off. And it's like. To the point my wife like, babe, y'all straight? Y'all went around that corner and y'all getting this footage? Is this even wise? I'm like, we good. We good. We covered. Like, And it was like in the middle of the, like, it was crazy, man. But like I say, the reality of what we was talking about, we captured it. The real, like, it was a real murder scene, man. And like I said, when we came back, we was talking after the video shoot. It hit my heart like, dang, man, somebody just lost their life around the corner, man. Like, Like, the footage that we got. Not too vivid, you know. We just for respect, we didn't get all up in it. You know what I mean? But we got the yeah. outskirts, the the footage. But it's real, man. Like the streets won't let me live. Like the whole concept. Like you trying to change and do your thing, man. Like I know so many homies. Like the story that's depicted in the video. That's that's my homie. He's a goon in the street, but he he showed up. Like all right, bro, I, I play the character, and that's the story, dude. Of a dude got a job. You know, he got he got kids now. He trying to change his life. But the streets won't let me live because I just got off work. My girl cooking. I'm playing with my kids. Then I get a phone call. The homie just got killed. Somebody that I love and I grew up with. So now mm. out of loyalty and love, which okay. may sound twisted, I'm obligated to go ride for the homie. <clears throat> like, right. you know what I mean? Now I got to put it all on the line. I got to risk either going to jail for life, leaving my family to fend for themselves, or either worse, lose my life in the process of me showing loyalty and love because the streets won't let me live. That's why I tell people this is a deep record, man. Like it's it's deep on so many levels, man. Oh. Yeah, it ain't no song, man. This is this is deep. It's a mantra. It's a mantra. Man, it's so <laughs> crazy. You know what I mean? Because like we go around and a lot of people ask us, how did you make it out? You know what I mean? People ask, how did you make it out? Because the streets won't let you live. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we've heard a gang of stories where uh you say I'm changing my life, and they'll kill you. And they'll kill you because you want to make it out of the lifestyle. Your own so-called homie, the own right. the people who supposedly fell for you. Like you know what I mean? And so like, it's not easy to make it out. One, you just have to be a factor. You have to be genuine about who you were uh, mm-hmm. in darkness, so that when you come to the light, they know you're not faking. They know you're not doing it because you're scared. You're not running away from a war or the police or whatever. You're just doing it because it's a real transition. Yeah. Um. That's what counts. Yeah. Like usually you'll be you'll be good with that. But people ask that question because the streets won't let you live. You know what I mean? You go to jail for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Something to come back. Uh, you'll have to kill. You'll be killed. You get put in a wheelchair. It's just so many different things that the streets, if they don't take your whole life, they'll take a giant aspect of your life to where living life ain't the same no more. And you know, with us, mm. yeah. You know, they get out, they try to get a job, and it's like, man, my felonies won't allow me to get the type of job where I can really provide for my family. Like, like reconcile say on the hook. He like, man, the streets keep calling me back. Like, like now I'm back hustling, trying to be careful. I'm gonna just be more careful this time. What? Come on, man, knock it off. You right. know what I mean? But right. I understand yeah. that the streets won't let me live. Like, like I, I gotta hustle. I gotta feed my family. So a lot of times, just two sides to that. People look at it like, oh well. Man, you could get a job, you know, do, but I know brothers that really, and I tell them straight up, like, bro, that ain't no excuse. Like, if you're still hustling and you out here getting money like that, it's because you want to. Man. Because I want to feed my family, too, and I have to, and I make a conscious choice to do it the right way. So if you're still out here and you doing what you do and you know it's illegal that can possibly land you back in jail or worse, then, then you making that choice to do that, man. So I don't want to hear, oh, I got to feed my family because I've been on both sides of it. 
Yeah. And I know I was using it for excuse because I was just addicted to the lifestyle and I just loved to be in the streets. And it wasn't even about my kids and my girl. But I told myself that. But not sometimes it's not, man. So you got to make a conscious decision to be like, OK, look, man, if I got to start off at this warehouse and, and do my thing and try to work my way up, do me a side hustle, sell barbecue place, whatever. The same energy and time you put in, into a negative hustle, you can put it into a positive hustle. That's bars. Yeah, hustle right. and just stop hustling. Yeah. The negative way. That's all. Keep your hustle. Right. You know, right. I think a lot. A lot of people forget that too. Like they think it's just, all right. You give up. You know. You you give the give up the lifestyle of the streets and 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 go work at you know a warehouse like you said. But the reality yeah. is like, you have that business mindset already, and you can apply yeah. that to something else. Like you said, that same energy into into yourself, either mm -hmm. by learning a new skill or 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 starting your own business. It's gonna be hard. You know. Yeah. What I mean? It's not gonna be e easy. But when you got the drive and you got the hustle, man, like mm -hmm. you gotta at least try, man. Yeah. But you see so many stories of like people that they um, you know, they they made a lot of money, then they lost it all, and then they gained it all back. Like some people just have that drive and that mentality. So if you know how to get it, you know how to get it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Like, right. We go back to not to take it back to LeBron, but as an example. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> it's just an, it's, 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 a, it's a, a valid one. Like he's been on three different teams, multiple coaches. If you know how to go into an environment and add to a culture, yeah, and help create a culture, like you right. could do it anywhere. You know what right. I'm saying? Like if it's in you, it's in you. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, what's in you is gonna come out of you. And so, like if you're a leader, you're gonna be a leader. If you're scary, you're gonna be scary. If you get money, you're gonna get money. If you mm. whatever. You you don't be that. Mm -hmm. And until you become something different, no matter where you are, you're going to find a way to be the same thing you were. That's why you can't just, well, I'm going to move. Uh, I want to get out the hood. And then you move two states away. And then you find the same kind of people that's doing the same stuff with different right. names. Now, that's now real, for you man. fellas, right? So just a little a little bit about y'all transition right when y'all came to the lord how was that with your friends and your homies and now you know you jack and jesus now and they're like yo you know what i mean with, with the with the environments that you guys came from like how was that transition you know what i'm saying for anybody that's out there listening and they're like all right they got christ but how was that transition you know what i mean from going you know what i mean letting your people know about that I think everybody's story is different because yeah. like we were respected in our communities. So like when a person who's respected for being genuine at whatever you are, because you can be a genuine player and you just get a gang of girls, but you genuinely that and you don't put on the front. You could be a genuine hustler, a genuine killer, a genuine fighter. You can't be a genuine player because you got a lot. <laughs> you can't be yeah. genuine, yeah. genuinely lying to you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I love her. I love her. I love <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Look, yeah. like, just actually be who you say you are. Don't put it on thick, don't. And people know that that's just who you are. You stand on your, your morals, codes, and principles. Like, when you do that, when you make a transition to become something new and you've gained that respect for authentically being who you are, mm -hmm. people respect it. You know what I mean? It's the dudes who be faking that when they come to Christ, people give them that side eye. Mm -hmm. mm. Faking before. Yeah, you was faking. That's what you know. You was faking it being in the streets. You right. was faking it being a gangster, faking it being whatever. Like, so for me. And they can change too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody can change. That's the beautiful thing, though. You know what I mean? Because even though we were real at some street stuff, it was fake because it wasn't who we really were. Mm. it's who we became like you are who god created you to be you are everything that's in the seed that god put inside of you now whether you know they say the bible say the seed lest it fall to the ground if it falls to the ground it just stay there but if it die and break open and the life come out then everything would be what it be so like everybody got the opportunity to change but it's just when you a genuine person it, the transition is smooth for me didn't nobody say nothing um i didn't get no questions i didn't you know what I mean? It wasn't no, 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 no comment. Well, it'd be little comments, but you don't have haters no matter what. People are going to hate you whether you're doing right or wrong. My homie right. stuff. Crazy. Like, I got literally, like, my homies used to pull up because I ended up living an hour away. 
So the homies would pull up, like, bro, we're on our way, just to come look at me. <laughs> like, you good? <laughs> Around the house, like, you know, like, you straight? Like, like you for real? Like, everybody thought I, I was crazy, you know? Mm. I had a situation with Cat Williams on the table. Like, I was doing a lot of independent stuff. Like, me and my team, which included my, my cousin, who was my business partner, who, uh, who I lost right after that. He got gunned down, man, a few months after my transition, which was... It, it, it took me on a whole nother path. Um, it was, yeah, like, but we had, we we had our own money. We we was turning down independent deals because what the what the Indies was trying to give us and offer us, we already had that. So we was turning deals down and, you know, sitting down with Cat, trying to put something together with what he was doing. And then God called me. Like, God was already, see, my, my team didn't know that I was already in the middle of my transformation because mm. I was still going up. But everybody was just like, they'd be like, man, you, everything cool, bro? Because I wasn't feeling it no more. Especially when I stopped, like, I tell people I didn't stop drinking because of religious reason. Oh, I can't drink as a believer. Like, that's not my story. Like, God literally took the taste of alcohol out of my mouth. Like, literally. Like, I just stopped drinking. And I'm a dude that wake, I used to wake up to 1800, pour our own shots, Quavo. If it wasn't that, it was really wow. Like, I was a heavy drinker I'm not your, cereal, right? Right? your cereal too <laughs> man, i'm talking about everything bro if i got a hangover go buy me a beer that beer gonna fill this hangover we're gonna yeah. start all over yeah. like so when i stopped drinking at the functions and it was like and it just i just didn't want it no more like i i, I just it didn't it tastes nasty i didn't want to drink no more i wanted to be sober-minded out of nowhere like i just i gotta be sober i gotta be on my toes like I'm going, not knowing at the time I was going through this spiritual warfare in my soul, in my mind, you know, God was pulling the enemy, trying to tug back. It was tug of war. And I'm just sitting here showing up to these events, to these meetings and like with not much to say. And I'm, I talk, you know, so again, when, when God pulled me and when he, when he really showed me the vision and the purpose for my life, a lot of people didn't receive it. My wife knew because my wife was ministering to me. I was going to church with her. But I grew up in church, so every time she would start a scripture, I'll finish it. What you telling me? I know that. Right, okay, right. yeah, John 3, 16, give me what? The whole book of Ephesians. I can break it down for you because my mama raised me in church, but I didn't have the word in me, in my heart. You know, I, I hadn't decided mm. like to make that decision to change, you know, but so I, I kept going, though, man. I kept going to church, and, and then God just spoke to me one day, bro, and it was like that straddling the fence, which was about a four to five month process. It was over. It was done. Like I was committed, totally sold out. And I didn't even, I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. Like, I didn't know what was happening at the time. Like what was happening to me? Like, I don't, but I knew it was real. And in the process, my mom had got sick. She was battling breast cancer. So all of that, like it just made life got so serious to me. You know what I mean? Like everything got so real and serious. And God was like, I cleaned you up so you can fight this fight with your mother and enjoy these last years with her so she can see wow. your transition and know that wow. that she changed and the seed that she planted growing up has now you know come through the concrete mm. and, and wow. so god man. and you know i i, I, I so took she care can of see her mom. prayers answered right yeah man so i saw what god was doing because my mom used to worry about me man i would call my mama from jail she'd come bail me out i tell her where the money is she'd come get me as a sold out christian woman she was like all right well your stash she would come bail me out man and one last time i called my mom i'm like look mama I'm just letting you know where I'm at so you won't be worried. It's been a few days. Don't come get me. I'm tired. I'm finna ride it out, you know. And my girl ended up coming to bail me out anyway two days later. But, like, that was my mama, though. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was crazy, man. But, yeah, like, I, I would say to anybody that's that's in, in transition, don't worry about what nobody think or what they say. If people think you're crazy, it's okay. I'm willing to be crazy for God. Be willing to be crazy for Jesus. Be willing to look like you crazy because if God is speaking to your heart and he got a calling on your life, then it, it's not, nobody else can say it. it. don't matter what nobody else says. As long as you know who you are and you know your purpose, you know, they gonna see it. Because all the people that thought I was crazy, they called me for prayer on the low. But it's cool. <laughs> but let them do it on the low. I ain't exposing, oh, the homie called me the other day. No, I, I keep it on individual levels. I got killers, real homies, dudes that I've been in jail with, dudes that, be wilding out on Facebook and Instagram doing their thing, but in the middle of the night be calling me to pray with them. Right. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I disregard whatever I see them do on social media in that moment because I don't judge them according to that. If God 
put it on your heart to call me for prayer, that's who I am. That's who mm-hmm. I am. For you. you know, so God is going to use you. So just be obedient. You know, continue to walk, walk it out and watch God send those same people to you because he called you for a reason. You know what I mean? So nobody right. else can do what you can do. Nobody else can reach who you can reach. So be obedient and, and, and just ride it out. Yeah. Yeah. To add to it, I would just say be at peace with the call. Yeah. Be at peace with the fact that he called you. He called you for a reason. And if he won't give you nothing that you can't bear, understand that if people start going left because you made the decision to go right, then that was part of his will and you can handle it. Mm-hmm. As long as you're confident in the fact that he's not going to give you too much, he's not going to overload you, you know what I mean? And you just really believe that, like, you'll be straight. But have have confidence in, in, in the fact that he called you for a reason and be at peace with it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they can't pay you to heaven or hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? They ain't going to pay your bills for you. They ain't going to, like, they're not in your jumpsuit with you when you're in jail. They're not. They don't put their pants on in the morning with you. They're not in the shower with you. They don't cry with you when you by yourself. They don't celebrate with you when you by yourself. At the end of this day, no matter how close to people you are, it's just certain real parts of life that you got to handle by yourself. Right. I mean, the judgment is the most important one. And so sometimes you got to make selfish decisions, man, and and be cool with it. Because if they're your friends, if they love you, they're going to be there. No matter what transition or change you go through, if somebody loves you, then they're going to be there and they're and they going to accept you for who you are. If they don't, then they never loved you anyway. They just love what you can do for them yeah. or the idea of who you are of them living vicariously through you. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. real tough. Mm, good stuff, fellas. Hey, y'all, y'all <laughs> came in here. I forgot all my interview <laughs> questions. I'm over here. I don't even know what to say. I'm just enjoying it. Listen, just listening, it. yeah. <laughs> Look, can, can, I, can I break one thing down on the album before we leave this, this, this subject? Uh, it's called Urban Epistle. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't even understand that. It's it's a made-up term that, that that we came up with. Um Urban, just a metropolis area area. You know what I mean? The 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 big city, major city, and all, all of the politics, the culture, and the stuff that come with it. The hood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but look though, urban could be the suburbs in an urban area. Yes, if it's yeah. Because urban is just metropolis, right? So like the urban definition of urban is the hood. But like if you look at Webster's definition of urban, it's just a metropolis area. Any big city modernized area is not a rural area, right? Uh, an epistle is a letter written. We all know that the epistles that Paul wrote to the church, they were epistles. And so this album is literally just modern apostolic letters, man. And we wrote letters to the streets. We wrote letters to the church, no different than Paul did. Wrote letters to the rich, wrote letters to the poor. And we wrote letters to deal with situations concerning what you're going to have to go through living in this urban environment. And that's just what the whole project is about. Um, Cause it sounds cool, urban official, it sounds catchy, but like it's a whole get down behind it. Yeah. And we just want to make sure that everybody understood that. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. Why you you answered it for me. That was, that was, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> but you know, you know, we, I had seen a, a meme recently, um, and it was something like, does does college uh, make people qualified for ministry, right? So Bible that, college, right? Yeah, Bible college. Let me let me specify that <laughs> Bible college. Oh right? no! So now with you guys coming out with that, like, what do y'all feel about that? Like, you know, people that they get these degrees, they go through these this process, and then they're like, oh, I'm ready for ministry. You know, from your guys' experience being that, I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys been to Bible college or not, but what is, what has your experience been? I'm not against it, but no, nah, I would say this, man. Uh, the problem with the church is information versus revelation. Come on. It's, 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 it's boiled down to information versus revelation, right? Preach. Um, Tell them. You only get saved through revelation. Because position is God removing the veil. So, like, what was already there, you realize it was there because God removed the veil from your eyes see right what a big part of the church, say that again which he just said right he was saying that as he came up he knew everything but it wasn't until it was revealed yeah it wasn't revealed so right. like a majority of the church is regurgitating information from the revelation of the people who god inspired to write the scripture mm. the the revelation is supposed to birth more revelation because the kingdom is perpetual, it's steady moving, it's alive, it's growing. Only dead things stay stagnant, right? 
So like Bible college can't teach you to enter into the Holy of Holies and receive revelation from God. Bible college teaches you how to retain information. It teaches you how to structure a sermon. It teaches you historical concepts and aspects of the word of God. Mm. But like, can't give you a that don't save nobody. And mm. it's necessary because like, I'm a pastor too, like, so I, I understand, like, you know what I mean? But I didn't go to Bible college, but a lot of the stuff that I learned in sitting down becoming a pastor are things that they teach you in Bible college. You know what I'm saying? Right. But what I say is there's more, there's more to it after that, man. Like Bible college can teach you how to treat the Bible like a history book, but like, you're not helping nobody if you're not moving in the power and the authority and in the love of God. Yeah. It's amazing that we we read and quote scriptures about these powerful people who did all this powerful stuff, but we think it's okay for us to live powerless while we quote this power. Mm -hmm. And Bible college don't give you that. Like going to church don't give you that. Right, right. You time with God to get that, and you got to die to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's real because you you can't they they can't teach you the voice of God, right? like nobody can yeah yeah like like based on personal relationship you know what yeah I mean? no no type of discipleship no 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 type of uh bible college um can teach you that it can teach you fundamentals right it, it can teach yeah. you structure but that really comes with intimacy with god you know that yeah. time that you spend like any relationship right yeah, you, you gotta go. have that intimate moment you know that that time invested you know and 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 I agree, man. I, I I think it definitely has to be a calling from God, and it comes from from spending that time with Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, said, good stuff. Yeah, what <laughs> <laughs> so listen, all you Bible, all you guys that are in Bible school, man, drop out, man. Don't spend all your money on college. <laughs> <laughs> Just do with switch. Get this. your switch anointing. You I just drop twisted out. hurts words right there. <laughs> yeah. nah, but look though, look though, to be honest with you, like I guarantee you there's somebody who's gonna hear this whose plan was to go to Bible college because they thought that that was the full mission and that's how they become prepared. Mm -hmm. And it's somebody who's gonna say, I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna steep myself deep in the word. Like Sometimes you got to do like Paul did, man. You got to go to the desert. You got to go to a dry place and sit with the Holy Spirit for a while. Yeah. Right, right. Mm. And even even then, he didn't start preaching right away. Right. No, no. Nah, continue to get filled. Continue right. to get filled. Right. And you got to know the voice of God. You know what I mean? Right. You got to right. know. Like I tell my brother, he'd be like, well, I don't get it, bro. You saying when you hear God, like he posts the, the sky crack open and he'd be like, hey, uh, Kareem, I told you. I'm like, bro, man, like this is the idea. I'm like, bro, when you hear the word, when you hear the spirit speak to you, you know, you know that you know. You know right. what I mean? The thought that you know didn't come from you, you know, and you know God speaks to your heart and he'll give you confirmation. But you have to be in reach. You, you, you have to be close enough to him where that door will open. Like, if you're not in range, there's no way you're going to get that. Like, it's just like me. when I, I like that home, in range. I like that. If I'm not in range, when I get mm -hmm. close to my house to open my gate, it ain't going to open until I get in range. You know All what right. I mean? I open it from down the street. I'm just pushing buttons. But you got to be in range. You know, you got to be close enough. And to be close means intimacy, relationship. So you got to mm -hmm. be in range for God to even open up doors, for him to even hear you. You know, and in range means, again, intimate and in relationship with, you know, you got to be in relationship with God. And that's being in your word, staying prayed up, getting together with other brothers, accountability. You know what I mean? Not holding nothing in, giving the devil uh, room and leverage over you because you don't speak on the things you fight with. Most brothers think I can't tell them I'm struggling with lust, man. They're going to look at me different. Man, you better open your mouth and let your brothers know. <laughs> you pray and get this demon up out of here, man. You, you're trying to keep it. You know, so things like that, man. But relationship is the key. Religion, relationship over religion. That's what I push. Yeah, Amen. I think the big thing that was parallel with both of our stories, most of our stories is parallel. Yeah, that's why, like, he can answer a question. And I don't have to say nothing. It's like the same. The <laughs> names changed, and but like the the stories are same. Stay the same. <laughs> yeah, but like when we got saved, we just served. We was cleaning toilets, man. 
running audio like at the church four or five days. And we was doing the same thing in two different cities almost wow. at the same exact time Dude, when we wow. got set. Look at God. That's, your, look, that's your brother from real. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. But look, like, though, that, I say that to say when you just throw yourself into serving, because ministry is literally the definition to minister is to serve, right? Mm -hmm. right. right. So when you throw yourself into serving, when God can trust you, your heart to make it not about you and to make it about the people and his will and all that, he'll begin to open up your mind and give you vision, give you ears to hear so that you can understand revelation and understand how to do ministry at a higher level. You know what I mean? And you just step outside of the gift that helps. And so make yourself available, man. Make yourself available for the body of Christ in the world. Make yourself available for people. You know what I mean? A lot of people get saved and then they just hide in a corner in their room. And like you say, cause you prayed for somebody cause you saw a post on Facebook that you're doing something. Wow. Like, you gotta be willing to <laughs> sacrifice, man. I, I like, it's been my scripture lately, man. John 15, 13. And it's great. No greater love than this. One who will lay his life down right, for his friend. Right. That scripture, me, like, there is no greater love than this. This is Yeshua talking. Yeah. The one who will lay his life down for his friend. Not necessarily like, I'm going to jump in front of the train or, or I'm going to die, jump in front of a bullet. In that case, too. But I'm saying, like, are you willing to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. for those that God has sent? your way for you to serve and protect? Are you willing to be stretched? Are you willing to sacrifice for somebody else? It may be a loved one or a complete stranger, stranger, one and the same. Are you willing to sacrifice, man? And I, I love that because that keeps reminding me of what this is about. And it's about serving. Like we tell people all the time, man, this music is a point of contact. I said on any platform, I don't care about rapping. I don't yeah. care. I've been the man in my, in my, in my neighborhood. I don't care about none of that. Like, this music is a point of contact for us to reach people and give you this. That's what it's for. Like, man, I'm telling you, <laughs> this music, I don't care about it at all. Like, but I appreciate the gift that God has given me to be able to get close to somebody and get their attention and give them what I'm really came to give. Them. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Amen. Hey, Hurt. Don't. What, what, what does your name stand for? Uh, humble, ubiquitous, righteous teacher. So, Hurt was my hood name. Uh, I got it as a teenager, man. And uh, right before I got saved, God was talking to me. I didn't know he was talking to me. I just thought I came up with something that sounded catchy. And <laughs> for real, though, and that yeah, acronym man. came out. Like, um, and right before I got saved, just like him, I was dealing with some big people. They was offering us a gang of money. And I ended up walking away from it. And I had an album called Hurt, H-U-R-T. Um, and it was humble, you big with his righteous teacher. It was a dope, dope, dope album. And God called me, I erased it, erased my, I had a documentary, erased everything, just stopped. Wow. Um, and then when I got saved, everybody was telling me like, oh man, you can't be hurt. Like, you can't, that's an evil name. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a whole lot of religious stuff. So I tried to change my name and I was like, I, I call me true, T-R-U-H. I turned my life around, I'm gonna turn my name Everybody still called me hurt. That was dope. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, nah, bro, your name still hurt. That was dope. Yeah, I, I tried. And I, I remember one day I was like, I'm going to be Cephas and I'm going to be this. And I'm like, ah, whatever. <laughs> and then it came, God was like, nah, man, you hurt. Like, and I'm going to show people that your name don't control you and that this name is going to mean something completely different. And so, uh, mm. yeah, it's humble, ubiquitous, righteous, teacher. Uh, Three words is obvious. Ubiquitous is, is the Jeopardy word. Um, and it just means being in multiple places at one time. So like through technology, through relationships, through just dealing with people, I'm able I mean, to right. be everywhere and, and be in one place. Music is playing different places, teachings, different stuff, seeds planted or watered. Like my, my uh, existence on this earth remains and it's going to remain when I leave because of the memory of the things that I did. I'm going to be around as long as this place is around. Right. right. All right. We got that breakdown then. Right. And I noticed, I also noticed that um, you guys had some like t-shirts. Uh, it was like, uh, it said holy. And then it was a ghost from Ghostbusters. Yeah. 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 So we, we, we have a, a clothing line at RPH. It's called Righteous Society. Um, we got a few shirts. 
Um, shameless plug. This is a, the, the latest design, Lord of God. But the one you're talking about is the Holy Ghost shirt. Um, yeah. And under it says Hagios Noema, which is Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit in Greek. Um, and we just, uh, you know, trying to spread a little love oh, within yeah. fashion. It's a you can go to right wait, 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 wait. Man. righteous man righteous what you can, you can check it out at right righteous society apparel.com mm -hmm. you can go check it out man it's it's all kind of stuff on there hoodies shirts um and a, a portion of the proceeds man it just goes back to us being able to do ministry it helps us to be able to help other people. That's just what it really boiled down to. That's what's up. Yo, so with, with the music, right? Which I, um, by the way, I mean, it's dope. I, I, I could tell, you know what I'm saying? Like how, how tight y'all are and how y'all bounce off of each other and the energy and everything. So I, I assume and I imagine that that's how it is with the music. Like it just come mm -hmm. you know to y'all, you know what I mean? So it ain't like yo, we need to do this this day. It just y'all just let it flow. So yeah. with that, y'all plan on doing. I mean, I know with COVID and everything going on, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, y'all got plans for a tour or anything like that, or, or discussed it? Oh, uh, when when uh when Rona go home, we'll we'll put. And they let us all go home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll step outside and stuff. I mean, it's slowly but surely actually opening up, man. I've I've been yeah. at a few events. I've done a few events in the past month and a half. It's opening up. Um, it depends if the government want to make some more money or not. Whatever agenda they got going on, if they go. Oh, oh you, someone huh? listening to to Jimmy over here. <laughs> No, no, don't don't get me twisted. I'm not saying that the coronavirus is fake. It's, it's yeah, real. Not for sure. For oh, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. For sure. Um, but it's a it's agendas behind everything. Opportunists you know how to capitalize on opportunities. Yeah. Um, so you know, when, when stuff open up, we'll we'll get back to it. Um, because the crazy thing about the album is it's like 12 singles. Mm -hmm. And so true. I'm excited to like perform it. Yes. I'm usually not excited to perform music. Like, I just want to see the reaction, especially we got a song we ended the album on. It's called Hallelujah. Like, and it's like a real worship rap type in the spirit song. And I, yeah. like, I'm excited to end our set with that and go straight into ministry and the word and the altar call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, side so note, we don't do events without altar call. Yeah, man. The music is a point of contact, so you know we're gonna have to touch. We're gonna we're gonna deal with the devil, generational curses, and all that. So yeah, we gonna we gonna do some stuff. It's just playing everything by ear. Like yeah. it's weird. You right now, the world is so weird. It's difficult to make tangible plans. Like we can we can make viral plans. We can do stuff on the internet and plan mm -hmm. to do things. But like to make something tangible about how we gonna move with the traditional music structure of hitting the streets and all that, like, it, it's, it's not feasible. You know what I mean? So, like, we just playing everything by ear when it comes to that. Bro, I just I got, came back, you know, well, I just came back from Florida. Florida's open. That yeah, joint. Yeah. Open. <laughs> like, I was, I was in a restaurant and, and people were screaming, yelling. It was packed in that joint. <laughs> no mass nowhere. No mask, dude was drunk, screaming. I was like, yo, I need a bubble over here because this dude getting crazy. <laughs> Bring the bubble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Downtown LA right now, though. Yeah, downtown, they <laughs> yeah, downtown LA, they Laker all down there. Boy. Laker game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been to two parades, man, so I know I know them people. They about yeah, to Laker, another parade. Crazy. Crazy, mm -hmm. drunk. Right after Raider fans. Raiders and Lakers. Full of love. They start off with yay and then fighting. Like, what's y'all weird? Oh, wow. Here to show love and then everybody just tripping. It's Look, crazy. And I went to two parades, like I said, and every gang in California was represented at the Lakers parade. Yeah. Like literally, like you <laughs> see, you see Northanios and Serenos, Cribs, Bloods, Latin Kings, Hoover, this, this, that. Everybody is out there. And it's mm. like, like you said, you come out there to celebrate, but then at some point in time, 
that that person that's inside of you click and you be like, where you from? Mm-hmm. And it's usually when everybody head into their cars. Mm-hmm. Okay. After the, the fun. The parade is over. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's crazy, man. But nonetheless, you know, it, it, it is what it is, man. Crazy. I got one last one last question before we wrap up, and I and I want to make this point for the listeners. You will find this question only on YouTube. You're not going to find it on Spotify, Apple Music, nowhere, only on YouTube. So if you want to listen to it, make sure you check out the YouTube channel. 